All right. So sit up tall. You can sit on a block or a blanket. And you want to find a comfortable position for the spine. And often when we're elevated or sitting up a little higher, the spine is a little bit happier. And then roll the shoulders back and down a few times. Shoulders back and down. You want to feel the shoulder blades moving away from the ears. The shoulder blades are moving away from the ears. And as you press your sitting bones down, we're thinking of the whole spine lengthening, lifting through the crown of the head. Chest open, eyes relaxed. And just come back to your breath, inhaling and exhaling. Notice any thoughts that are moving around in your mind. And it's very normal to have a million thoughts at every moment, but just come back to the breath. We're working on harnessing our thoughts and drawing it back to the breath. So we'll begin with the mental centering. You're going to take your hands alongside the ears. Inhale. As you exhale, gather your mind. Collect your thoughts. Palms together at the third eye. Inhale here. And as you exhale, offer the mind down to the heart. Two more times. Inhale. Exhale, gather the mind. And offer the mind to the heart. We want to draw the tension out of the mind, the brain, the face. And one more time. So we're always connecting to our heart center, practicing from our heart, not from our head. Chin to the heart, so you're bowing your chin down, and it's an act of surrender of the mind to the heart. And then lift the chin, release the hands, and open the eyes slowly. You're going to twist your right side, so take your left hand on the outside of the right knee, fingertips down, lift through the crown of the head, inhale, and exhale, draw the belly towards the spine as you twist. Go to the left side. Inhale, lengthen, and exhale, twist. Now we're going to pause here. Go back to the right side. Stay here and use your right fingertips, like um, kind of on your fingertips, like so, behind your back. So as close as you can to your sacrum, you're going to push your fingers down. And I want you to feel that the more you push your fingers down, the more you lift through the crown of the head. So inhale, lengthen through the crown of the head, exhale, twist. And then come back to the center. Take the left fingertips. Notice the more I press down, the more I lengthen. Okay, we're focusing on lengthening the spine. We don't want to collapse. So we're going to inhale, lengthen through the crown of the head, exhale, twist. Couple more breaths here. And then we're gonna add another piece to this twist. We're gonna go to the right side, press your right fingertips down, push down, lengthen, and then as you exhale, see if you can draw the pubic bone up towards the navel. So we're engaging the lower belly as you exhale and twist. So every time you inhale, you're lengthening through the crown of the head. And every time you exhale, just lift the pubic bone towards the belly and twist. So you want to twist from the core, not from the low back. Keep the chest open, keep the spine long. Second side, inhale, lengthen. Lift through the crown of the head. Exhale, draw the belly in and up. And twist. So you want to feel that the inhale, we're lengthening. 
The exhale, you're using your stomach muscles, your lower abdominal muscles to twist. One more breath. And then come back to the center. We're gonna come forward, knees wide. Stretch the arms out in front for a moment and come on the fingertips here. So you wanna be on the fingertips. You're gonna sit back onto the heels. Relax the forehead on the floor and engage the arms. Really keep the arms lifted. So the triceps are lifted. Strong, strong arms here. Now walk your hands to the right, and I want you to take your right hand on top of your left hand. So the right hand on top of the left, and then you're gonna pull your left hand forward, like you're trying to make your left arm longer, and sit your left hip back. And you should feel a nice stretch to the left side of the body. We're stretching the lats here. You can invite your breath into the left rib cage. Okay, we're gonna go slow and deep, opening the whole body today from head to toe. So sit back, open the left side of the body, open the heart. And then walk the hands to the left side. This time you're going to take your left hand on top of your right. So you're gluing your hand down. You're also using your left hand to stretch your arm forward as you sit back. And you try to keep your shoulders level with the floor and then breathe into the right thigh. So breathing into the right rib cage here. See if you can expand that side a little bit more. And then come back to the center. Come on to all fours. We'll go from the side here. So the knees are underneath the hips, the hands are underneath the shoulders. As you inhale, we're gonna draw the shoulders away from the ears. Press the shin bones, so the whole length of the shin bones should be pressing down into the ground. So you're pushing the shin bones down, opening the chest, and then exhale, round the spine, chin in towards the chest, belly in and up. And then inhaling, Relax the spine, open the heart, open the chest. So I want you to find the coordination of the breathing. As you exhale, we draw the belly in and up, and at the same time, flex the lumbar spine. As you exhale, lift the tailbone, vertebrae by vertebrae, opening the chest, drawing the shoulder blades away from the ears, chest forward. Okay, a few more like that. Exhale, just warming up the spine here. And inhale, open the chest. And exhale, round. Inhale, open the chest. Exhale, round. And if you want a little more stretch in your low back, you can sit your hips back just a little bit. And you'll feel the stretch go more into the lumbar area. And then come out. Okay. Lie on your back. We're going to come to a spinal twist up here, focusing on the upper back. So hug the right knee in towards the chest. And then bring your leg across the body. So your right leg will come all the way towards the floor, knee touching the ground. And reach through the right fingertips. And I want you to press out through the left heel. So you want to really energize your left leg, keeping your right knee down. And then reach through the fingertips and start to rotate the upper back towards the floor. And take a few breaths here. So again, it's the same pattern. As you breathe in, the belly relaxes a little bit. But as you exhale, that's when you draw the belly in and up and push through the bottom heel. And twist. One more breath. So we're ideally trying to get the knee to the ground and the shoulder. Okay. Left leg in. Hug the left knee in towards the chest. Bring the knee across all the way down. If this hurts your back or your hip, you can let your leg come up a little bit. 
Let's see if you can glue your knee to the ground. And it's okay if the shoulder comes off the ground. Okay, so the left shoulder comes up. Push through the right heel. Energize that neck. Inhale. Lift the belly. And as you exhale, see if you can rotate from the upper back, the area between the shoulder blades. So it's not just the shoulder that's coming to the ground, it's actually the upper back. You want to focus on twisting from the upper back. Push through the right heel to stabilize the low back. So now we're trying to get the shoulder, the ribs rotating to the left. And come back up. Let's do another one each side slowly and then we'll speed it up. So we're going to take the right leg in. And bring the leg across and push out through the bottom heel. And then reach through the right fingertips. Now bring your knee down more. Push out through the left heel more. And then open the chest. Open through the right fingertips. Inhale and exhale. See if you can start to get the right shoulder and the right rib cage closer to the ground. And come back. Don't forget to lift the belly on the exhale. So the core is engaged as you exhale. Bring the knee down. Push out through the right heel. Inhale. And exhale. Reach through the left fingertips. Open the chest. Open the heart. One more breath, and then we're going to speed it up. So we're going to do one breath per movement. So here's how it goes. We're going to inhale and exhale, twist. Strong bottom leg, lift in the belly, back to center. Inhale, hug the left knee in. Exhale, twist. Try to keep the shoulder on the ground. Inhale, right leg in. And exhale, twist. Back to center, left leg in, inhale, exhale. One more each side, one breath for movement, twisting to the left. And then twisting to the right. And then release back. Um, we're gonna need our straps, so go ahead and grab your Strap, we'll take the right leg up. If you have a loop in the strap, you can, you can loop it and put it over the ankle. So we can use the hand in the loop. If you don't have a loop, that's fine. You can also just hold on to the strap on both sides. Okay, just warming up the hamstrings. Now only take your leg up as high as you can, keeping your knees straight. So if your knee wants to bend, then you're going too high. You have to lower it. And you want to keep your quads engaged, right leg, left leg as well. Push through the left inner heel and draw the right shoulder down towards the ground. Five breaths here. And you can play with the breath. So as you breathe in, the belly is relaxed. And as you exhale, you really want to feel the lift of the pubic bone towards the navel, the belly towards the back of the spine. And as you inhale, you relax the belly. One more breath. And switch legs. Take the left leg up. Push out through the right heel, and you can switch hands if you have the hands in the loop. If you're holding with both hands, you just continue. Draw the left shoulder down towards the ground. Now look at your right foot. Don't let the right toes turn out. Okay, almost everyone, their feet turns out to the side. You want to press the center of your heel down, toes up towards the sky, and draw the left shoulder back and down. Push up through both heels. Push out through the heels. Open the chest. Shoulders back and down. Now lift the belly. See how that changes the pose when you engage the stomach muscles. One more breath. Good. And then release that side. Now roll to the side and come up. 
If you have a looped strap, you can take the strap over the elbows. Okay, if you don't, that's fine, you don't need the strap. But we're gonna work on trying to push out into the um, strap. So I'll come here in this shape. And you wanna make sure that your strap is equal to your shoulders. Hands to the side. So we're gonna open the chest here. If you don't have a strap, you can also just imagine that you have a strap that's limiting your ability to overextend your elbows. So you're gonna push the elbows out, and we're gonna come into downward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Talk on my face. So hands spread wide, push out into the strap. It's okay to bend the knees here. Okay, in order to get the hips lifted. So bend the knees, lift the hips up, and if, it, if that's easy for you, you can start to straighten the leg. But the idea here is that we're pushing out into the strap, resisting ourselves and spreading the shoulder blades wide. Hold for another breath. And then come down, and stretch out through the fingertips into child's pose. Okay, and try that again. So again, the strap is over the elbows, right? At the bony part of the elbow. And your shoulder or elbow creases are facing one another and you just push out. If that's too much pressure on your hands, you can do the same thing in all fours. You can also just push out and work the upper back muscles. If you can come into down dog, go ahead and do that. Push out, straighten the arms, lift the hips, push the heels down, open the sides of the waist. Okay. And then walk the feet forward and come up slowly. So if you have the strap, you're going to hold the strap, um, arms by the side in front of you, arms straight or a scarf works or belt works. And we're gonna just go up and over a few times. Up and over. Now here you wanna keep both your arms straight. Up and over, good. Up and over. Both the arms are straight the whole time. If you can't go that far, it's okay to just come up and go a little bit behind the ears. Now speed it up a little bit, just forming up the shoulders. A little faster. Okay. And then move it to the side. So if you have a chair, you'll use the chair. We're going to place our hands on the chair. If not, you can also use a wall, or you can have your hands on the ground. But we want the chair to elevate the upper body so that we can come into a full down dog with the legs straight. So you want the heels on the ground. Lengthen through the sides of the waist. Push the heels down and lift the hips up. Lift the hips up. So lengthen the sides of the waist. Push the heels down, lift the hips up, and open the chest. While you're here, really notice the breath expanding into the ribcage. You want to keep the sides of the waist long from the armpit all the way to the sides of the hips. And then push your heels down and take the tops of the thighs back. So you're thinking about using the upper thigh bones going back to lengthen the spine. Come up, and then we're going to come forward into a plank. It's like a modified plank, so everything is in one line. You're going to push your hands into the chair and spread the shoulder blades wide. Okay, so everything is in one line. Legs are strong, hugging towards each other. You don't want to sink into your upper butt, so you want to push your hands down and spread your shoulder blades wide on your back. Hold. Ease forward. Belly in. And then down dog again. So we're going to do this a few times. Okay, push the feet down into the ground, lengthen the sides of the waist. Push the heels down. Open the chest, and then again, come forward, plank. 
Keep everything in one line. You want to feel like you're zipping your legs together. And then push your hands down so you feel the shoulder blades spreading wide and knees forward. Okay, plank pose. Belly in towards the spine on the exhale. One more, down dog. Really glue the heels into the ground. Take the thighs back and see if you can feel yourself pulling your pelvis away from your lower ribs. So we're creating traction in the low back here. Heels press down, sides of the waist bone. Good, play one more time. Push the hands down and open the chest. Open the chest. Spread those shoulder blades wide. Hold a little longer, everything in one line. Watch that you're not dropping your head. You want to keep the neck in a neutral position. And then come. Okay, so still with the chair, we're going to take the right leg forward, left leg back, opening the hips. We're going to prepare for some standing poses. So fingertips on the chair, roll the shoulders back, take the heart forward. Okay, our goal here is really to maintain opening in the chest. So we don't want to be rounded here. We don't want the upper back rounded. You want to feel like you're pulling your shoulder blades back away from the ears and taking the heart forward, pushing the right foot into the ground and the left heel into the ground. So opening up the legs, the thighs, the chest. And then <laughs> come back to the breath. See if you can calm the breath, slow the breath down, nice and smooth. And then switch back. Left leg forward, right leg back. Come on the fingertips. Parshvottanasana preparation. We're going to roll the shoulders back. Take the heart forward. Square the hips. Open the chest. Push the right heel down into the ground. Right heel down. Open the chest. Open the heart. And then come up. So we're going to either do another one of those, or depending on the height of your chair, you can move your chair around. And what we can do is take your hands on the chair so that your, your spine comes down at a 90 degree angle with the chest open. So it depends on what kind of chair you have. Either you can do the one we did with the fingertips on the seat of the chair, or the hands can come on the chair. And the spine is long. The idea is to keep the spine long. The legs are strong. And you're drawing the right outer hip back. Right outer hip goes back. So your whole body is lengthened. Okay, tractioning the spine, lengthening the spine. And even push the chair forward a little bit. Come back to the breath always. And then switch sides, you'll take your left leg to meet the right, right leg back, and stretch, reach, lengthen the spine. You want to draw that left outer hip back, left outer hip back, and open the chest. Think about both sides of the waist being very, very long. Okay, and come up. Turn your chair around. We're going to come into tri uh, triangle, triponasana. But we want to maintain the sides of the waist. So you're going to take the right leg and turn it out, and the left leg and turn it in. Look at your feet and make sure that the right heel is lined up with the center of the arch of the back leg. Okay? Now, if you also want to focus on getting this external rotation, this is going to become very important um, as we progress through a few poses here. So this upper thigh, take, you can take your right hand and actually turn it out. You want to feel this upper right thigh turn out. And at the same time, with your hand, you can draw your right sitting bone forward. So as the thigh bone rolls out, the right sitting bone goes forward. So you want to avoid the butt from sticking out. 
So the sitting bone is drawing forward, the thigh is rolling out. Really get that external rotation. Make sure your knee is in line with your toes, legs straight, arms out to the side. So your focus is constantly on the thigh rolling out. And then lengthen the spine and bring your hand on the chair. Left hand on the waist. And here what we want to do is we want to push the chair away. So you're getting a lot of length through the bottom side of the waist, through this right side, okay? In this pose, a lot of people collapse on this side. We want to maintain the length through the whole spine. So you can even push your chair away, getting a little more length through that side, but without losing the external rotation of the right thigh and the sitting bone coming forward, okay? That keeps your spine in a proper position. Now, roll the left shoulder back. Open the chest and breathe. Draw the belly in and up. Lean through the whole side of the waist. And then come up slowly and we'll switch sides. So you'll turn the right toes in. And move your chair to the other side or turn around. Left toes turn out, right toes are slightly turned inward. Okay, it's a small turn, turning in of the right foot, heel to arch. And then take your left hand on your upper thigh bone and really roll it out. Get that left thigh to roll out, that left sitting bone to come forward. And then reach out to the side, open the chest. Okay, keep the legs strong, you're lifting through the legs. Lengthen, reach, reach to the left side of the waist. And then bring your hand down without losing the length. Right hand on the waist or the hips. Push the chair away from your head. So as you push the chair away, we're really focusing on lengthening the left side. The head stays in line with the spine. Don't let the head drop, okay? If it hurts your neck at all, you can look down, but keep your neck in a neutral position. And then, as you lift your belly, roll the right shoulder back. Inhale, relax the belly, exhale, engage the core as you twist. A small twist. Good. And then come up, turn the left toes in, and set the feet together. We're going to take the same pose, but without a chair. So we're going to use a block, if you have a block. If not, you can put your hand on your shin. Set the feet together, and then open them wide. So I'm going to turn the left toes in, turn the right toes out, heel to arch. Have the block behind the right foot at any height. So to make it easier, um, we want it higher up. If you're pretty flexible, you can go a little bit lower. And what we want to do is come into triangle here. Prepare. Okay. Roll the front thigh out, take the right sitting bone forward, and then stretch as if you're going to reach for the chair. So you imagine the chair is there. Left hand on the hip. And then you bring your hand down, but without collapsing on the right side. So you want to keep this side of the waist long. Push your hand down into the block and lift the left arm up. So as you push down through the block, you're reaching up through the left fingertips. And open the chest. So one more instruction here, just stay here. In order to make sure that you don't collapse on that right side, you want to bring the upper ribs, the left ribs, down. You're absorbing them into the body. And that helps lengthen the right side of the body. Your arms are in one line, open the chest. Come back to the breath, lift the belly on the exhale. One more breath. And then push the feet into the ground strongly, come up, turn the right toes in, turn the left toes out, and place the block behind the left foot, heel to arch. Arms out to the side. Reach through the fingertips, draw the shoulders away from the ears, but keep rolling the left thigh bone out, left spinning bone forward, and then lengthen, reach, as if you're reaching for a chair. Reach, reach, reach. Okay. Right hand on the hips. And then bring your hand down without collapsing. Push the feet into the ground. Lengthen through the crown of the head. So this thigh is always rolling out. Sitting bone is coming forward. 
That puts your spine in a nice position. Now push the left fingertips down, right hand up. Push the left fingertips, reach up through the right fingertips. And then remember this right rib cage, bring it down, bring it down into the body, into the body. That keeps the lower side, the left side of the waist long. Push the feet into the ground, hold there, and come up. So we're going to move into Parsha Konasana, a few different variations. Put the block to the side, we will use it soon. And you're going to want to make sure your legs are wide. So I emphasize this external rotation of the hip because it's really important. Um, if you don't roll the thigh out, and now we're going to bend our knee. If you don't do that, the knee starts to go in and the butt starts to stick out, okay? And then it compresses the spine. So you want to roll the thigh out, take the right sitting bone forward, calm down, and see if you can come into a 90 degree angle. Okay, so just focusing on rolling that thigh out, rolling the sitting bone forward. That's the right leg. And the left leg, you're just going to take the left thigh back. Energize the left leg and push your back heel into the ground. So strong, strong legs. Just feel that happening in the legs. Hands can be on the waist. Hold there. And then come up. And let's turn around to the other side. Right leg turns in, left leg turns out. Most of you need to have a wider, wider stance with your legs so that when you come down, you really can hit a 90 degree angle. Okay, and you want your knee right above your ankle. Now don't let your spine turn. Keep your spine straight. So looking straight ahead, the thigh is rolling out. The left sitting bone is coming forward. You don't need to turn your torso. This stays open. Zip the belly up, push the back heel down, and just feel how much opening it takes in the hips to get into this position. And then come up, okay? Turn the toes in, and set the feet together for a moment. Tadasana. Legs together, chest nice and open. Bring the hands to the heart and open the legs again. Okay, so nice and wide. Turn the right toes out, turn the left toes in. So now we're going to come down into the pose, bend the knee, roll the thigh out. So as you're bending the knee, the thigh is rolling out, the thigh is rolling out, the thigh is rolling out, the knees in line with the toes, lots of weight in your back leg. And then rest your right forearm on your thigh, but without collapsing and roll the thigh back with your hands. You can use your arm to sort of roll your thigh back. Then take the left arm overhead. So you wanna have a straight line from your left fingertips all the way to your back heel. So you're reaching from the waist through the left fingertips and from the waist down into your left heel. Think about that. From the waist up to the fingertips and from the waist down through the back heel. And now as you roll your thigh back, Open the chest. So the thigh rolls backwards, the right rib cage comes forward. And then use the strength in the legs, come up and straighten the right leg. And turn the right toes in and turn the left toes out. Nice wide stance, long stance, heel to arch. Arms out to the side, bend the knee, calm down. Come down. Parja Konasana. Roll the thigh out and then we rest the arm. We're not leaning on the arm. We're not collapsing in the pose, but rather rolling the thigh back. We're doing this action with the left arm. Okay? So roll the thigh back. Take the right arm overhead. Reach through the fingertips and push the right outer heel down into the ground. And then again, think about lengthening from the waist all the way to the fingertips. And also from the waist down into the back heel. Now open the chest, rotate the chest open as you roll the thigh back. Lift the belly as you exhale. 
and then come out feet together. Let's take a downward facing dog. You can just come on the ground. Walk the fingers forward, lift the hips up. Imagine you're pushing out into that strap. Lift the heels in the air and then bring the heels back and down. It's okay if the heels don't touch the floor, but you want to maintain nice space in the ankles. Okay, then walk the feet forward, shoulders back, chest open, and come up. Okay, we're gonna go further with this pose. So we're gonna set the legs wider. Okay, now your right hand will come in front of your foot. So if you need a block, you can have your hand on a block. We're gonna come down. and bring the hand onto the block so the hand is in front of your leg. And the reason our hand is here is so we can use our arm to push our thigh back. Okay, and then left hand will stay on the hip. So now we can get a little more twist here. We can roll the right thigh back and start to open the chest. And lengthen through the crown of the head. Okay, stay there. Now a lot of the weight is in the front of the leg, so I want you to put some weight in the back heel. To balance that out and then open the chest. So as you inhale, belly rises. As you exhale, the belly goes in and up, twisting from the core. Lengthen through the crown of the head. Pull the left shoulder back and then come up slowly and turn the right toes in and the left leg up. And I have the block in front of the left foot. Inhale, exhale, come down, bend the knee. Watch that you're not just collapsing forward, but you're controlling the movement. So we rest the hand on the block. But at the same time, my mind is still in my back outer heel. So I'm coming down low. I'm going to roll that left thigh back, right hand on the waist, and then rotate the chest over. So the more the left thigh goes back, the more the left rib cage comes forward. And then lengthen through the crown of the head and breathe. Feel yourself drawing your belly in and out. One more breath. And open the chest. Relax. Good. Again, downward dog or child's pose. Child's pose is an option, so if you don't want to put some more weight on your hands, you can also just rest forward. And take a few deep breaths. So come into full downward facing dog, focusing on spreading the shoulder blades wide on the back. So either or. And then walk the feet forward, hands alongside the waist, and come on up with a straight spine. Okay, next part. Take the block again, legs wide, turn the right toes out, left toes in, and the block is now going to come behind your right foot. So behind the right foot. Harsha Konasana, same pose. So bringing all of those ingredients into this pose, we're going to roll the thigh back. Imagine that our hand is there helping, but now our hand is behind. Okay, this is the full expression of the pose. And as you roll your thigh back, you want to feel like your thigh is pushing into your forearm. So thigh is pushing into the forearm, push the back heel into the ground, and then take your arm forward in front of you and overhead. So now you have to work the thigh back towards your arm. Open the side of the waist and push the back outer heel down into the ground. And fold. And then come up and we'll switch sides. Turn the right toes in, turn the left toes out. 
Lock behind the left foot, hands on the waist. Chest nice and open. And come down. Bending the front knee. Then bring the hand down on the block. Now your leg is moving towards your arm. So the leg is rotating out, pressing into your arm. Take the right arm forward and up. And then put a lot of energy through the back outer heel. Take the right thigh bone back and open the chest. As you exhale, belly goes in and up. And then come up slowly, turn the toes in, step the feet together. We can move your block to the side. And come back to your chair. So we'll have a hand on the chair like we did in the beginning. Moving into Parigrita Trikonasana. So our hands are going to be on the chair. We're going to roll the shoulders back. And take the chest forward. And take the heart forward. And now you're going to take your left hand towards the center of the chair. The right hand will come on the low back. Okay? And with the right hand, you want to feel like you're pulling your tailbone away from your head. So you're drawing the tailbone away from the head and gently rotate towards the rib. Now here you want to watch that the twist is coming mostly from the upper back, not from the low back. So the hips are level and the rotation comes from that upper back. And roll the right shoulder back a little bit. Good. A couple more breaths here. And then come back to center. Step the left foot forward. Step the right leg back. Parigrita Chikonasana, revolving triangle pose. You want to twist a lot more from the thoracic spine. Okay, this is where we have more range of motion available, but this is also an area that's very tight for most people. So the left hand will come on the sacrum. You're going to draw the sacrum and tailbone away from the head. So I'm actively tractioning my spine, drawing the left outer hip back. Pull this away from the ribs. Take the heart forward. And then twist to the left. So roll the left shoulder back. And my focus is twisting from the area between the shoulder blades, the back of the heart. You don't want to squeeze the shoulder blades together. Keep the back of the heart wide and soft. Push the right heel down into the ground, open the chest. You can smile if you want. <laughs> okay, and come out. From here, since you have the chair, downward dog using the chair. Lift the hips up. Now I want you to focus on melting the heart down towards the floor. Heels press down into the ground. Melt that heart. Okay, without sinking into the shoulders, really feel the upper back opening. Ears stay in line, in line with the upper arm bones. Thighs back. See if you can get your legs straight here. Okay, and then come up. So if you have your strap, we can use our strap. If you don't, don't worry about it. We'll just have our arms up. We're going to come into warrior one. Um, if you want, you can have your back heel up the wall. Okay. If you don't have a wall, then just have your heel in the air. So the left heel will come on the wall. The right leg will come forward. Hands on the waist. Okay, we're moving towards a deep pose. Um, so all of these poses are preparations for another pose that we're coming to very soon. So Virabhadrasana 1, Warrior 1. Energize the left leg so the left thigh is moving up and back towards your buttocks. And then bend your front leg. Bend your right knee. Left leg engaged up. Okay, so really work that back leg. Then you can take your hands in the strap and bring the arms up. 
So we're gonna reach through the fingertips and push out into the strap. And the focus here is really energizing the back leg, the left thigh bone, left upper thigh. Try not to bring your shoulders to your ears. Watch that, okay? Drop the shoulders away from the ears, pull the strap apart, hold. And then release that and switch sides. Left leg comes forward, right heel up the wall. So the heel will come up the wall, the left leg will come forward. Have your hands in the strap. Reach up through the fingertips and then come down. Now, make sure the back leg is not stopped. You really want to use the wall. That's why we have the wall here. We're going to push the heel into the wall and take the right hip, right thigh bone up. Keep reaching up and relax the shoulders. Slow the breath down. And release and step forward. We're going to take another arm variation here, okay? So if you have your strap in your loop, you'll have it behind your back, like this. Um, and if you don't have a strap, you can clasp your hands behind your back. That could work as well. Left heel will come up the wall, and the right leg will come forward. Okay, and then you're going to reach through the fingertips. Same pose, but now we're in a different chest opener. You're going to reach down with your hands, down. Push the back heel into the wall and open the chest. And soften the breath. Even though you're working your back leg, even though the front leg is, might be burning a little bit, you want to soften the forehead, soften the eyes, soften the jaw, and then switch legs. Right heel up the wall, left leg forward. <coughs> Reach through the fingertips and come down. Push the wrists out into the strap. So you want to feel the chest opening here, especially the front from the collarbone to the opposite side of the shoulder. Push out, lift the chest, energize the right leg, strong right leg. And then release and come up. Okay, so we're going to need um, a block, maybe a blanket. If you have any knee problems, you might want to rest your knee on blanket or just to make it comfortable. <laughs> and we're going to come into a supported lunge. So we're going to be moving towards Paribhita Parjva Konasana, revolving side angle pose. Okay. This one is challenging. It requires a lot of opening for the whole body, a lot of balance, a lot of strength. So we're going to start here. We're going to work in stages, and you'll do only up to the stage that feels right for you. Push the left foot down, push the right foot down, and just come into a gentle twist here. Left hand on the outside of the right knee, right hand on the tailbone. Sacrum moving down towards the floor, lift through the crown of the head. And then twist to the right. Nice gentle twist here. Now if that feels okay, you can take your elbow and hook it on the outside of the knee and bring the hands together in a namaste position. And you're bringing your hands towards the center of the chest. So I'll turn around so you can see me better. Right leg forward, left leg back. The elbow is on the outside of the knee, but you're pushing your knee into your elbow and the hands are going to come towards the center of the chest. So you're moving your hands down, you're moving your knee into your elbow. Keep your left foot grounded. Good. And now we'll do the left leg. So I'll turn around. Left leg forward, right leg back. First thing is the upright twist, okay? So you always have an option. If one is too much, go back to the first variation. 
We never want to create any pain. So push the right shin bone into the ground, really ground the entire length of the front of the shin bone. Lift through the crown of the head. Move the tailbone down towards the floor. Twist to the left. Nice, gentle twist here. Hold. Now remember the same principles from the beginning, right? As we inhale, we lengthen. As we exhale, we draw the belly in and up and twist. Now take your right elbow on the outside of the knee. The hands can come towards the heart. And you're going to bring the hands towards the center of the chest. Arms towards the center of the chest. Really ground the right foot, ground the left foot. Keep the knee in line with the toes. So you're opening the back of the heart. Good. And release that. All right, now we go a little further. If anything feels like it's too much, then you come back to the last variation. So right leg will come forward, left leg back. The elbow will come on the outside of the knee, hands to the heart. Okay, we're here. Now you're going to curl your toes underneath and see if you can lift your back leg off the ground. Just straighten the left leg. Open the chest. And then release. Switch sides. Take the left leg forward. Take the right leg back. So left leg is forward. Right. Now make sure when you're twisting, it's the right elbow on the outside of the left knee. Right elbow on the outside of the knee, okay? Come down, hands to the heart. Push the hands towards the center of the chest. When you do that, it creates a nice twist. If that feels okay, and you want to go further, you can lift the right leg up. You have to really engage the top of the right thigh. Okay, open the chest. Engage the right thigh. Lengthen through the crown of the head. And then release. Okay. <laughs> We're going to keep going. Right leg will come forward, left leg back. So now, if you have a block, you can place your block on the outside of your right foot, okay, on the outside of the right foot. Here, it's important to make sure right and left is correct. So the block is on the outside of the right foot. And again, if this feels like too much on your shoulders or too much, then you take either the first variation here or the second variation here, okay? We're gonna come back to the, the second variation. Hands here. Now watch, watch. We're going to lift the left leg up, take the left hand down on the block, and right hand on the low back. So you're going to draw the low back away from the head and push the left arm on the outside of the knee. And open the chest. Open the chest. And then release that side. And switch. All right, so if that doesn't feel good, you come back to the first variation. Lunge position, take a deep breath. Right elbow on the outside of the knee, hands to the heart. This can be enough, okay? You can lift the back leg up if you want, and then bring the right hand down. Left hand on the sacrum. So with this left hand, it's like you're drawing your sacrum towards your back heel. And then open the chest. Push the knee, this front knee, left knee, towards the arm. Push the arm back towards the knee. And lift the belly as you exhale. And then release. All right. So one more, one more stage. Come into the full pose, almost the full pose. So the right leg will come forward. Same thing, left elbow on the outside. Hands to the heart. Okay, find your grounding here. Don't be in a rush. 
Throw the back toes out, lift the leg up, place the left hand down, right hand on the low back. Okay? Now, if you want to go further, we'll take the arm overhead. So you're stretching through the right fingertips and engaging the left leg. If that's too much on the shoulder, you keep your hand on your tailbone, moving down towards the floor. Couple more breaths here. As you exhale, draw the belly in and up. And then release. Okay, last one. Bringing up the spine a little bit. Left leg forward. Right leg back. Keep the right elbow on the outside of the knee. Hands at the heart. And maybe you just stay here, that's okay. Or curl the toes under, lift up. Place the hand down, left hand on the sacrum. Open the chest. And then take the arm overhead. So the whole time you have to really engage this right thigh, moving it up. Energize your back leg. Then open the chest here. And then and let's come into child's pose. Knees can be wide. Toes touch. Walk the hands out in front. Let the belly come between the thighs. Relax the head. And just take a few deep breaths here, noticing that when you breathe in, the belly sort of puffs out towards the floor. And when you exhale, the belly moves in and out. Then walk the hands back and come up. And you'll take your chair again. We're going to come to press the Rita Padmanasana with the chair. So our emphasis is really releasing tension in the spine. So the chair can come in front of you. You'll step your legs wide. And the toes will turn in gently. And here you want to push the outer heels and inner heels into the ground. Okay, a lot of people tend to collapse on their arches and you don't wanna be collapsed here in the feet. You wanna make sure your arch is still lifted. And the reason we have the chair here is so that we can bring our body forward and push the chair away and start to lengthen the spine. It should feel nice on your low back. So legs are wide. Walk the hands forward. Keep the legs strong. Lengthen the spine. And just take a few deep breaths. And then bend the knees, heel toe the feet in, walk the feet forward, come up with a straight spine. Good. Um, lie on your back, take your strap. If you want, you can have a blanket for your head. We're going to take the right leg straight up again. Okay, but coming into Parsha Sutta Parangushtasana, so we're going to bring our leg out to the side. Okay. If you have a blanket, you can also put a blanket on the outside of the right hip. It's pretty nice for um, kind of taking the pressure off the back. So I'll actually do that. And I'll move so you can see this side. So the blanket will go on the outside of the right hip. And then hold the strap with the right hand. And you're gonna push through the left heel. Okay, inhale. As you exhale, bring the leg out to the right side. So when we have a little support, it helps us keep our pelvis low. 
And then look at your right foot and make sure the outer edge of the foot is parallel to the floor. Push through the heel, shoulders back and move and open the chest. My left hand can be on my left hip bone. Yes, I guess. And you're opening the front of the pelvis. And then as I exhale, I want to draw the belly in, back and up. And as I inhale, relax the belly. Slow the breathing down, really push through the heels. So you're really energizing the legs. And then bring that right leg up and release it. And we'll take the left leg up. I'm going to turn around so you can see that side. Lie on your back. Left leg up. Right leg pushes out. Put the blanket on the outside of your hip. Okay. Now really engage the right leg. So you want to set up for the pose. The right hand will be on the right frontal hip bone. And then slowly, without collapsing to the side, we're going to open the leg up. And keep the outer edge of the foot parallel to the floor. So you're going to push through that left heel. Pull with the right hip bone down towards the floor. Lift the belly. Engage the thighs. Shoulders back and in. Feel the belly. Lift on the exhale and relax on the inhale. Stay there. Move the blanket out of the way. Your right leg will come up again. And now we're going to bring the leg all the way across. So usually we just go to about here where the foot is in line with the shoulder. But for this variation, we're going to bring the leg across. And you're going to reach through the fingertips. So you want to keep your right shoulder on the ground. Push through the right heel. Energize the leg. And open the chest. And hold. Reach to the right fingertips. Feel the outer hip opening here. And then bring the leg back up. And then switch sides. We'll take the left leg up. Pull the strap with the right hand. The left arm is out to the side. And a little bit above the shoulder. So you're at about a 45 degree angle with your left hand. And then bring the leg across. You want to feel a nice opening through the whole left side of the body. Now, I have a wall here, so I'm going to use the wall. You don't have a wall, that's fine, but you can push your foot also into the wall and open the chest. But keep the legs active. Both legs are active. Okay, let me come back up slowly. Take your right leg, cross it over the left, hug the knees in towards the chest. So knees are stacked, we're hugging the knees in. A few deep breaths here. Maybe pull the ankles apart. And then switch sides, take the left leg over the right, hug the knees in. Feeling a nice opening through the outer hips. Reach for the ankles, open the ankles out to the side. Knees in towards the chest. Release that. 
Okay. We're going to do one thing for the abdominals here. So your arms are going to come out to the side, palms facing down, and your hands are in line with your shoulders. Okay. And then you're going to hug the knees in. Um, we're not bringing the knees in close to the body, but sort of a little bit away and squeeze the thighs together. So if you have any back issues, this might be enough. You wanna feel some work in the stomach muscles. The more you bring your knees away, the more the stomach muscles will work. The more you bring your knees to the chest, the easier it is. So find somewhere where you feel your belly engaged, but your low back can stay glued to the ground. We're gonna inhale, and as you exhale, bring both knees to the right. Inhale, hold. And exhaling, using your stomach muscles, you're drawing your right belly towards your left shoulder. Come back up. Okay, so go really slow here. Inhale, center. Exhale, hug the knees in. Bring the knees to the left. Push the right shoulder down. And as you exhale, hug the knees together and pull using the stomach muscles, We're using the obliques here. Okay, again, inhale, center. Exhale to the right. If you're pretty strong, you can go further. But as you exhale, you're lifting from the lower belly, the right lower belly, towards the left shoulder. Inhale. Exhale to the left. Keep your right shoulder on the ground here. And now move from the left lower belly, pulling it to the right shoulder. Okay, to make it harder, you bring your knees further out. To make it easier, bring your knees in. One more each side. Inhale. Exhale to the side. Maybe it's a small movement. Maybe it's a bigger movement. And then back. Inhale, center. Exhale to the side. Inhale. And exhale, using the stomach muscles, bring the legs back up and then hug the knees into the chest. So let's rock a little bit side to side. Hug the knees in, close the eyes, let the low back stretch out. You can also hold between the knees, that's easier. And then we'll roll to the side and come up. And we're going to take Shavasana, but if you have your chair, I'd like you to take it with your legs on the chair. So the chair is hard or cold like mine, and it's a metal chair, and then I like to put a blanket here because my legs are going to rest. You can also have a blanket or a pillow for your head. Shavasana is the most important pose. We do this whole class just to get to Shavasana. So you want to have a really nice shavasana, and we also want to release tension in the spine because we did work on some deep twisting. But when we do this, we also help rebuild the discs, okay? The rotational movement helps to rebuild the discs and strengthen the ligaments. So it's important, but now in shavasana, we can allow all that fresh oxygen and blood to come back to the spine and nourish the spine and heal the spine. You want to visualize all this wonderful, healthy, oxygenated blood moving to your spine. Make sure the chin is slightly easing at the heart. Shoulders are rolled under, palms facing up. And then just let go. Just make everything really heavy. As you breathe in, you might feel your spine or your back puffing out into the floor. And as you exhale, feel the release of the body. Nothing left to do, just be.
Happy exhalation. You're just melting your knees to the ground a little bit more. We'll take another few deep breaths here. And we'll gently bend the knees. Roll over to your right side. And stay here and just hug your knees into your chest for a moment. Still releasing the low back. And then press yourself up, but let your head be soft, let your neck be relaxed. So come up nice and slow, letting the head be the last thing to come up. And we'll sit up again. Um, you can sit up on your block just for a minute or so, and we'll notice the breath. Because when we work on Lots of deep twists and opening the rib cage. What it also does is creates more space in between the ribs. So it allows for more expansion of the rib cage. So close the eyes, sit up. Notice if it feels a little different sitting up at the end of class. And you just notice the breath. Is there a little more ease, a little more space? Take a couple more breaths here. Also noticing if maybe the mind is a little bit different. If there's a little less busyness in the mind, a little more focus. Maybe a little more quiet. Bring the hands to the heart. Let's close together with one ohm. We'll inhale. Um, bow the chin to the heart. Namaste. Release. Thank you, Rachel. You're welcome.